Greetings, interwebs. Naven Smith here, also known as Lie Psycho, depending on what medium you're talking to me on. Anyway, this election has been very interesting up until now, hasn't it? On the Republican side, we had like, what, 16 something odd people running, and then they came down to a populist. And on the Democratic side, we only had like three people running. Martin O'Malley, Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders, one of which dropped out early on, and the other two, of which have kept going up until, well, Sanders plans on going and throughout the convention, but that's his prerogative. Although, mathematically, if you look at what has currently been pledged, Hillary Clinton has gotten the Democratic nomination. So, that's fun, and if there were absolutely no problems throughout the election. Everybody reported, hey, I was able to go and vote very easily. Like, you'd be surprised how easy it was for me to vote. It was great. Democracy in action. If that had been the case, that would have been awesome, but that wasn't the case on the DNC side. So this, this election asked a fundamental question for the American people, for both parties. And the question was, can we elect, or can we get a nominated a populist into our system. Can we nominate populist? The GOP answered yes, and that populist is Donald Trump. So, yay, Donald. Uh, so, good job, GOP. You elected a populist. Your populist is not, not going to, like, go research and read up on the history of World War II and the general you know, circumstances that led to, you know, the nationalist rise of Aryan pride. Like, maybe you'll see the parallels, but if you already believe that, I, you're probably going to be for it, so I, I don't know. Maybe just go research history. It's not good when you use fear and division to separate people. It makes groups hate each other, and then when groups hate each other, they find it much easier to kill each other. It's not a good thing. And then Bernie Sanders, the populist on the Democratic side, he ran a fairly fantastic campaign. He did better than many expected him to do, but you hear all these instances of election fraud. I mean, when you compare Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton's rallies, you clearly see a disparity in the number of participants, yet... Hillary Clinton keeps winning, and there are all these stories coming out in Ohio, Arizona, California, New York. Uh, like, throughout the election, just these instances of election fraud, state after state. So Trump, Trump joined in the fray with like 16 other Republicans, and then he beat them down verbally by making fun of them and calling them incompetent and saying, hey, I'm not bought by corporations and separating people based on the other. Like, fear the others, the Mexican immigrants that are coming here, they're criminals and rapists. Fear all the Muslims, they're all terrorists. Fear the other, fear the other. Get the other out of there. Dissenters, oh no, get out of his rally. That's the other too, hate them. Hate them as well. And th that's not a great message, but it responds well with his base. Why does it respond well with the GOP base is a question America needs to ask itself. But, hey, they wanted that populist, they voted for that populist, they got that populist. The problem is, he's actually a populist, and he's got in celebrity status. Everyone looks at him and he's like, hey, Donald Trump, he's been in the public spotlight for the last, what, three decades, two decades, three decades, since the 80s. I don't know. I was born in 87. But all this election fraud, and Bernie's he's doing decently, considering nobody knew who he was a year ago. But he can't seem to win. And a large part of that is as soon as Iowa went up, they were reporting all the superdelegates. So she started with a dominating lead over Bernie Sanders, just with superdelegates alone. And she still hasn't gotten all of the pledge delegates to get the nomination without super delegates. Don't get me wrong, it's she's gonna have more pledge delegates than Bernie Sanders at this point, unless, you know, 
there's strong evidence of voter fraud and those lawsuits that have been being pushed forward actually go through. So yeah, the superdelegates started off just Hillary Clinton will be the nominee. And then Bernie Sanders, he's got a stronger progressive message and they condemn him for it because it's making Hillary Clinton look bad. And it's like, okay, she's a much better candidate on just, you know, knowing anything about politics than Donald Trump. You have to give that to her. And that's a lot of the appeal that they're going to hope to sell in this election, that Donald Trump is an incompetent fear monger. But what'd you say about a single payer health care system? Can't be done. She was for it back in the 90s. But when it came to keep fighting for it after she was a senator and even now as a president, she's, she's like, it can't be done. We tried to do it. We're not going to try again. And then on colleges, for example, what's what's Bernie Sanders' stance on college? Everyone needs to go to at least two years of college, and it should be paid for. Just add it to the K through 12, just K through 14. That's not. Just, I'm oversimplifying greatly, but those are progressive ideals. And she says, well, it's the students need to work their way through college, and it's like, ah. Oh. The students can study most effectively when they can focus their entire minds on studying or learning their trade or whatever they decide to be doing in that extra two years of education they get. But she's like, nope, keep working and you're probably still going to be in debt. We're going to make the college loans less burdensome. Uh, and then the populist for the Democrats couldn't be elected. But Trump got elected. Or he, he's the nominee unless there's some really shady stuff at the convention. And there might be, considering, you know, some of his rhetoric. This, this, the election, that is, it's going to be basically vote for Hillary Clinton because it, uh, Trump. And it's not going to be vote for Hillary Clinton because she's not a warmonger and she's going to keep us at peace and she's going to, like, you know, work on world affairs. No, it's just a mess. I can't do much worse than that guy, but we know that guy would be horrible. Just horrible. So that's going to be the fear. It's vote for Hillary Clinton or you get someone who's potentially a fascist. And that... That makes it appealing to vote for Hillary Clinton, even though, like, I understand the Unite Blue people. I understand the people who are like, I'm with her. Ugh. But is she as progressive as you actually want? And the answer is probably an emphatic no. Don't get me wrong, she has her high points, but she has her down points, too. Like the Defense of Marriage Act, that she was totally for. Marriage is between man and a woman. She evolved on it. She was already more than an adult at the time of the Defense of Marriage Act. She had evolved on most of her life issues and her positions by then. They eventually solidify at a certain point. So either it didn't matter to her then, and she was for it, but she faked the Defense of Marriage Act and faked being for it because it was politically gainful, or she didn't care until it was politically gainful to be for same-sex equal rights, like as far as marriage goes. <sighs> Given the sad state of affairs this election, the reality is I will probably be voting for Jill Stein in the Green Party. Or I'll write in Bernie Sanders, I don't know, he probably won't do an independent campaign, but if he does, I'm voting for him. Yeah, because honestly, we need to elect a populist in this country. Someone who's not beholden to the corporations. That's Donald Trump is not the person we need for that. Hillary Clinton, she says she's not beholden to the corporations, but from a psychological perspective, somebody does something very nice for you, like give you a whole bunch of money to help you get elected. 
you're going to be pro more at whatever positions they're going to have because, you know, the honey pot. You've got to keep making that money. And that's where Trump will attack her. Because even though it's not true now and he'll use the GOP machine to raise funds if he can, you know, his campaign isn't isn't a campaign, really. So that's Trump's got that going on for him. And Hillary's got that going on for her because it's a lot easier to beat a candidate who doesn't really have a good firm grasp on managing and running and operating a campaign at the national level. Trump thinks he's just going to keep going around giving speeches and, hey, that might work. He might prove me wrong, but I think it's safe to say if it's Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, unless people vote for a third party like Jill Stein, Green Party, plug, 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 then we'll get Hillary Clinton because on those social issues, things that people care about, people vote. Of course, I don't know if there's going to be great voter turnout this election. And Trump is appealing to a lot of people on the right side because of his more fundamentalist views on social issues and social rights. And, you know, the fact that if you dissent from his party, he will have you removed. That's, that's, that's America right there. Disagree with the big strong leader guy and, uh, uh he will have you removed. Of course, then he flip-flops on it. He's like, no, no, I said, I said, I said take care of them. I never said beat them up and I'd pay for your legal expenses. No, no. Donald, Donnie, Donnie, we have video. And we record everything of our presidential candidates that we can because it's a big horse race. And that's how Hillary Clinton's going to bash Trump. Because even though he's trying to shift moderate, she just has the Koch brothers or whoever fund her, or decide to fund her campaign, you know, Time Warner, the big media corporations, whoever decide to run her because, or fund her because, you know, the alternative is Trump, and, well, Trump's unpredictable, so, but yes, I live in a swing, st or I don't live in a swing state, so I'm voting for Jill Stein. People in a swing state, I'd ask you to vote for Jill Stein, too, but you have to weigh a different set of math. Your vote will actually matter, whereas my vote in the state I live will likely go to Trump. Oh, yay. So, I'm not thrilled about that. Yay, Texas. Anyway, so I, 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 I can say with pretty sure certainty it's not going to matter anyway, and hey... Maybe I can get Texas to go to Jill Stein. I don't know. That's better than Hillary Clinton. So, uh, this is a... The progressive candidates' highest qualifiers are pretty much, hey, I'm where I should be on social issues now. Mostly, anyway. $15 minimum wage, not so much. Healthcare, nah, not so much. Universal God, not so much, but, you know, she's the more progressive candidate because she believes in, like, protecting the rights of people because they're Americans. And she's basically, no matter how she spends it, Donald Trump can turn around and say she's bought off by corporations. Trump would be an absolute disaster on social rights from what we've seen of his rhetoric. But his disastrous rhetoric aside, you know, with walls and Mexicans and Muslims, oh my. Or as we call them in America, uh, well, criminals, rapists, and terrorists. Because Trump makes America great again, if you know what I'm saying. Makes America great again by making us hate people. Because we get really motivated when we hate people. That's a human trait. It's a self-defense mechanism. Anyway, so he stirs up the hate and the fears of the American people, and then we go to the war machine, and then we decide what? We're going to just eradicate all Muslims? Oh, gods, we've seen this before in history. Just replace Muslims with Jews. But I'll let you do your history research on that one and see if you draw the same parallels. Feel free to disagree with me. Anyway, I started this video asking the question... Does the system allow populists to be elected? There's an emphatic answer, and that answer is no. 
But I guess that works. that's what we get in American politics, where the so-called progressive party is the one that's most manipulated by corporations because of this nice, nifty, superdelegate system we have, which entirely shifted the balance from the beginning. And now, of course, all the Democrats are falling in line like the good little sheeple they are. I mean, uh, President Obama, it, it was expected he would endorse whoever the Democratic nominee was. Elizabeth Warren, that kind of stings a little bit because Elizabeth Warren notes the, that the fact that Hillary Clinton flipped on her stance on the regulation of banks and when she was first lady, she was all down on actually getting down on the regulation. But then as a senator, when she needed that good money to, you know, get elected, all of a sudden, oh, well, imagine that. She flip-flopped on her stance there. <sighs> anyway, this is Lie Psycho, also known as Nathan Smith, saying, vote for Bernie or Stein. Actually, vote for whoever you want to vote for. I'm going to vote for Bernie or Stein. That's just my obvious bias. Vote for who you think is the most progressive candidate in the general election, and look at all parties when you're voting that way. Unless you're a conservative, in which case you'll probably vote for a libertarian or ugh, Trump. Uh, have a wonderful evening.